Well, it's a pre-typhoon evening. Time for some Hamlet. It's always time for Hamlet. This is a nice little piece from the play within a play. Now, for those who may be just joining us, Hamlet is Shakespeare's most popular play, longest play, and the subject of my interest for almost a year now. This part is uh, th by the player king speaking to the player queen. This is a play within a play. See, in the story of Hamlet is, well, it's very complex, but the overall idea is very simple. Hamlet is Prince of Denmark. His father was killed, and his mother then married his father's brother. A ghost appears to Hamlet and tells him that his own uncle had killed him. So, this play within a play was Hamlet's way of trying to get some reaction out of Claudius, his uncle, to see if what this ghost told him was true. But what I like about this little dialogue is that the player king is really talking about a lot of things that are very pertinent and applicable to daily life and our reactions to people. So, I do believe you think, but now you speak. But what we do determine, oft we break. Purpose is but the slave to memory, a violent birth but poor validity, which now, like a fruit unripe, sticks on the tree, but fall unshaken when they mellow be. Most necessary tis that we forget to pay ourselves what to ourselves is debt, what to ourselves in passion we propose, the passion ending doth the purpose lose. The violence of either grief or joy their own inactures with themselves destroy, where joy most prevails, grief doth most lament. Grief joys, joy grieves on slender accident. This world is not for I, nor tis not strange that even our loves should with our fortunes change. For it is a question left us yet to prove whether love lead fortune or else fortune love. The great man down you mark his favorite flies, the poor advanced make enemies of friends, and hitherto doth love on fortune tend. For who not needs shall never lack a friend, and who in want a hollow friend doth try, directly seasons him his enemy. But orderly to end where I begun, our wills and fates do so contrary run, that our devices still are overthrown. Our thoughts are ours, their ends none of our own. There are two more lines beyond that, which out of context don't make a lot of sense, but we'll add them. So think thou wilt no second husband wed, but die thy thoughts when thy first lord is dead. Yes. There's another little piece I'll do, starting on the sonnets, Shakespeare sonnets. I think there's something like 150 of them, very mysterious things, poems basically. So much said about them. 
The other two, oh, this is, sorry, we should go back to that. Shakespeare's Sonnets, number 45. The other two, slight air and purging fire, are both with thee wherever I abide. The first, my thought, the other my desire. These, present absent, with swift motion slide. For when these quicker elements are gone, in tender embassy of love to thee, my life, being made of four, with two alone, sinks down to death, oppressed with melancholy, until life's composition be recurred by those swift messengers returned from thee. We even but now come back again assured of thy fair health recounting it to me. This told I joy, but then no longer glad I send them back again and straight grow sad. Those are some bits bits that I really like and love and memorize. 